This is the brand new Pineberry AI hat. It connects to the Raspberry Pi 5 by way of the shiny new PCIe Express bus, which introduces an M2 slot specifically engineered to fit the Coral AI Edge TPU. Keep in mind, a $25 Coral device will outperform a $2,000 CPU. And since this interface can be forced to use Gen 3 speeds, it should bring AI to the Pi like never before. Let's run Frigate's open source NVR home surveillance with TPU accelerated machine learning to see how well it works and ultimately if it's worth it. So we got my Raspberry Pi chugging along right there. The Edge TPU is nestled in there. For optics, I have a $15 webcam running Frigate via HDMI to my OLED screen here. And then everything is being controlled from my warp terminal here where you can see the uh, FFmpeg and RTSP streams are in place. And what's cool about this is if I walk into the shot, it's going to start recording. So now if I go into the frame, it should start recording. You can see this recording is in progress because I'm in the frame. Now, Frigate removed the Raspberry Pi from their recommended hardware list, but I was able to achieve faster inference times than all the devices they had listed. To build out our board, first we'll mount the TPU onto the AI hat, fastening the spacers and the screws. Next, we can secure this 16P FPC ribbon. Finally, we can connect the AI hat to my 8GB Raspberry Pi 5. Now the fully loaded costs for this setup are going to be about $44 USD. The AI hat goes for $19 and the Coral AI chip goes for $25, whereas the USB accelerator goes for around $60. Now the USB version relies on USB 3.0, which is technically slower than the PCIe version. Also the PCIe version has thermal management, so if it gets too hot it will dynamically scale down power draw and inference speed until the hardware is within acceptable ranges, which is helpful for people looking to have these running 24-7. So here we go, Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, and then we're going to choose our micro SD card. We're also going to set up our Wi Fi network SSH settings on Mac. If you do Control Shift X, it's going to bring up the pre configuration, and this is just going to kind of save you some time. So basically, set up Wi Fi, set up the host name, enable SSH, and that will be ready to go. All right, so I just want to pull up the resources on the right here. So I created a single script that should get the Coral AI working, it's all transparent parent as to what the script does. It basically downloads the driver and then it tweaks the operating system uh, and then it exposes the device. Let's go ahead and run that script. So I'll add a full blog post in the description so you can get every command and every step if you get confused. But basically we just want to execute this script. So I'm going to do raw, which is going to be the actual file itself. I'm going to copy the URL. I'm going to come over to warp. And what we're going to do is curl file pipe shell. So what this is going to do is it's going to download the instructions and execute them. And note that we're doing it as the user, not a root user. Don't elevate yourself to root quite yet. Let's go ahead and run this script. And this script's also going to reboot the Raspberry Pi when it's completed. All right, so the test as to whether the TPU is installed is to print out the Apex device. And there it is. So that's really the big hurdle is getting this device exposed. Once you get that device exposed, you can make it visible to Docker and Frigate uses Docker, PyCoral, if we're gonna run on a Debian 10 Docker instance. So now that it looks like we have the accelerator installed, let's go ahead and test it. So I'm gonna do the two tests that I think most people are gonna use, which is to leverage PyCoral, that's the Google Coral AI Python library, and also uh, Frigate for uh, home surveillance NVR. So let's start with PyCoral. The trick here is the library has been neglected somewhat, right? So they want you to essentially use an older version of Python. In theory, you can use Anaconda or Mamba to, uh, to use an older version of Python, but I was having a little bit of trouble with that. So what I'm actually going to do is just set up a Docker Debian 10 VM and we can run PyCoral inside that. So I'm just going to make a little directory here called Debian 10. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to make a Docker file and I'm going to paste this 
directive in here. We'll go ahead and save that. We're gonna use this Docker file that we created to uh, build our container or build our image rather. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. So the Docker file is um, setting up the OS for the virtual machine and it's also downloading a bunch of dependencies around the Edge TPU libraries. And I'm definitely following in the tire tracks of a lot of work that Jeff Gearling did. So shout out to him for that. All right, so now we're gonna run our container and enter it. So let's go ahead and run this command here. You can see that I was at host Raspberry Pi. Now I'm at host container name. I'm actually inside my container. Um, let's go somewhere that I can recognize. Okay, here I am. I should be able to run an inference now in this environment. There are some examples under the edge TPU directory, right? So like capture, um, analyze images, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and run classify image and we'll pass it an image and all that. All right, so we, we passed it an image and we told it to run an inference. It determined the species. Okay, so personally, I don't know what you're gonna do with Pi Coral or any of those examples. I mean, they're great to play around with. I guess if you're making your own custom TensorFlow light models, uh, you might want to use some of that code as a jumping off place. But I think most of you are gonna want to use Frigate. So let's do that. You should use an IP camera with Frigate. I understand that. I don't have an IP camera and I was able to get it to work with a webcam that I had sitting in my closet. So I'm going to use a webcam just as a proof of concept. Let's go ahead and set that up. So the first thing we should install is MQTT, which is the messaging relay service. Okay, so I'm going to install that. Check that it's working properly. You see this little green dot? That's a good indicator. We do want to modify one of the config files real quick though. And at the beginning, we're going to add a couple lines. And then we're going to restart the service. Now I know most of you are gonna be using IP cameras, so I'm gonna skip the RTSP magic, but if you do wanna know how to get Frigate to work with a generic webcam, I'll put that in the full tutorial below. Okay, and then let's get Frigate going. So I am gonna create a directory where we can house our config file. Then I'm also gonna create a YAML file. So now we're in a directory called Frigate and we have a file called config.yml. Again, this is gonna be in the description tutorial. I'm gonna paste in that YAML. And then the only thing you have to edit here is this should be your uh, Raspberry Pi's IP address. If you don't know how to get your IP address, you can just do hostname hyphen capital I. And we're gonna run this guy here. We're just gonna set up free. Now this is gonna run it in the background. So it's downloading the container. It's gonna run an instance of the container. We're then you're gonna pivot over to the web UI to manage it. And then notice this line here, right? We always have to expose the uh, PCIe device to any any uh, virtual environment that we're spinning up. We did it with the Debian 10 Docker image and we're doing it with the Frigate image. All right, so it should be running. I'm gonna do Docker PS-A. So it should set up a web UI server. All right, so if we go over to Chrome, what we should be able to do is go to raspberrypi.local. Okay, so now we're over in Frigate and we can see each camera. So we have the Eye of Sauron set up here. It's pointed away over here. Um, if we go over to logs, the main thing here is to make sure that we find this entry here, TPU found. And that just denotes that it was able to find our Google Coral hardware. But I do want to optimize this file a little. They do have a suggestion that I want to add in here. So they say for the FFmpeg directive, add this guy here, right? This is a pre set it says rpi 64 bit h264 hardware acceleration so we should get better performance Peg, so let's get the uh indentation correct so i'm going to do save and restart that'll just give us a little bit better performance and then if we go over to bird's eye we should be able to get a live feed sometimes you gotta play with the camera to get it working out oh, there it goes so you can see right here see all, everything that's going on. So it looks pretty good. I can even get trippy here and go, Whoa. Um, But uh, yeah, you can, you can mess around with like the quality and stuff like that. But one thing I wanna show you is we have in our config a person detection set up right here, and it will start recording every time uh, it finds a person in the frame, right? So it's it's running a quantized TensorFlow model against the frame using the TPU. And when it detects a person, it creates an event. 
and you can see all these uh, events that were logged. And what's interesting is, again, let me flip the camera towards me. Right, now that I'm in the frame and we go over to events, you can see now there's a an event in progress. Like it's literally recording right now. As long as I'm in the frame, it's gonna record. Right, so now if I go over to bird's eye view, and then if I move myself out of the frame, right, let's go over here, and then we go back over to events, it's gonna record five seconds after, but you can see, okay, the event stopped. Right, so it has all this sophisticated logic. I mean, you can get incredibly complex with it in terms of multiple cameras, multiple TPUs, USB TPUs, dual edge TPUs, and uh, different uh, machine learning models and different object detections and stuff like that. But uh, it works and it works really well. I haven't seen really many hiccups. I ran this on an x86 device in my last video, but I gotta say it runs a lot smoother on the Raspberry Pi 5. I mean, the Raspberry Pi hardware and software is just really solid. Um, and so this stuff runs pretty well. And then if we just go over to system real quick and get some readouts around um, performance, resource allocation, stuff like that. 7.49 millisecond inference time, I think is on the better end of what I've seen. So yeah, that's how we bring AI to the Pi. Some hobbyists have noted that the USB accelerator is underpowered and have come up with creative ways to solve for this. But when it comes to throughput, technically PCIe Gen 3 is faster than USB 3. But for these sorts of use cases, those kinds of data transfer speeds aren't really a bottleneck. But PCIe may offer lower latency, which could potentially affect our benchmarks. It would also be interesting to see what you could do with the camera module 3 with its beefy 12 megapixel sensor, which could be used as an HD IoT camera. Also, if you're more into the AI side of the house, you can easily install Google's Pi Coral library and create your own custom TensorFlow light models for prototyping and model fine tuning. I'm also personally curious if you could get a dual edge TPU working on a Raspberry Pi, since it's only $10 more, it doubles the resources, and doesn't require any more space. Also, it sounds like the Raspberry Pi will produce its own official M2 hat at some point, but it's looking like that will be an M key more tailored for NVMEs. But could you run multiple edge TPUs on a single Raspberry Pi? And the answer is yes, but apparently a single TPU can support around 10 cameras. So unless you're surveilling a casino, then one should suffice. So I'll be honest, for my money, I'd try to see if I could get away with using the USB accelerator. That way I could leave the PCIe slot open for super fast NVMe storage, which is really gonna supercharge your Raspberry Pi. Anyways, for more interesting tech discussions, check out this next video.